Want to be a billionaire like Warren Buffett? We'll stay tuned and we'll help you fill out that perfect bracket. The Inferno starts not now, but right now. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Inferno. I'm your host, Johnny Soto, and with me we have our oh-so-talented and trusted panel that features Anthony Mitchell. F is for friends who do stuff together. Joe Cortez. U is for you and me. And Torrance Dunham. N is for anywhere, anytime at all. Down, down here in, in the deep blue sea. sea. That was cheesy. <laughs> The Sun Devils men's basketball team are coming off a disappointing loss against the University of Oregon on Tuesday night as they fell by a score of 85-78. to Jahi Carson led all scores as he dropped 28 points. However, the Sun Devils allowed Mike Mosier to drop 22 and board 17. The Sun Devils are now 10-7 in Pac-12 play and are in a two-way tie for third place with Colorado. ASU still has one game left on their regular season schedule as they will take on the Beavers of Oregon State in Corvallis on Saturday night. The last two times these two teams played, they needed to go into overtime to decide a winner. With the more in-depth analysis of the matchup, we head over to the panel. Guys, take it away. Uh, this is now a must-win game for ASU after that loss to Oregon on Thursday. Tuesday, I should say. The Beavers should be an easier opponent, but that all hinges on whether or not we see, you know, the good ASU team show up, the home one, or their away team. Uh, they've been huge at home. Not good at, on the road. They've taken seven of their nine losses in enemy turf. In the Oregon State game, shots were not falling in. They went 38% from the field. Jermaine Marshall was 4 for 14 on field goal attempts. That's 28%. And Bachinski missed four layups. All of that needs to be rectified before tomorrow night. I've never understood how a seven-footer misses layups. <laughs> Me neither. Well, anyways, last time the Devils played Oregon State, they may have come away with the W in overtime. But let's be honest, it should have never come to that. The game in Tempe was all about missed opportunities for ASU. The Devil Bench got outscored by the Beaver Bench, 21 to 11. Jonathan, and Jonathan Gillings had nine of those 11, and all but one of those came in overtime. And check this out, ASU missed 15 free throws. That's 15 points down the drain. 15 free points! If they were playing for my junior high coach, they'd have to run, let's see, one minute for every missed free throw, 15 minutes, that's roughly one, roughly one rapper's delight. <laughs> That's right. That Rapper's is not a unit of measurement. Rapper's Delight is totally a unit of measurement. False. Anyways, AEC's got to be more opportunistic if they want to win on Saturday. Well, there's two, uh, there's two reasons that the, Devils struggle on, uh, that the Devils have struggled this season. One, as you said, they're on the road. Two, they start, off, uh, they start off bad. If the team starts off in an early hole again, like we saw against the Ducks, and earlier in the year against U of A, Carson and Marshall will have to carry the team because, as we have seen all year with the Devils, if they fall behind early on the road, it spells trouble. The Devils have to start off hot and not allow the Beavers to get on an early run. This means making high percentage shots as early as possible. Johnny? Thank you, gentlemen. It should be an interesting game as ASU will, look, will be looking to have some momentum heading into the Pac-12 tournament. However, now it's time to hear some of our fellow Sun Devils and see who they pick uh, to win the big dance with our Heat on the Street crew. Welcome back to another edition of Heat on the Street. I'm Kristen Carver here with Miles Todd and Trevor Migliorino. We're here and it's March, so we're gonna find out who has March Madness. We're gonna go around and see who has some basketball skills like Miles here and see if they can do any better. I'm here with two of the most handsome men at ASU and I have a couple questions for them. Who do you think is gonna win the March Madness tournament? Uh, ASU as an Appalachian State University. Okay, and you sir? Alaska State University. All right, and do you guys follow March Madness at all? Yes, highly. No, not at all. Who do you think is going to win the Collegiate March Madness Tournament? Um, collegiate basketball teams that I know are good are Florida State, Ohio State, Sarah Cruz, UNLV, Wichita State, University of Arizona, Kansas, uh, can I say Duke? Duke Blue Devils. I'm feeling Duke. Duke's been playing really good uh, lately, and I think Jabari Parker is going to lead that team deep in the tournament. They have a really good chance to win it all. All right, well, <laughs> do you think you could uh, show me how they play? They're playing bad. I don't know about you guys, but I saw some great basketball moves here today. Oh yeah, and we got a lot of people picking Duke, so it should be a good time, good tournament. 
Well, that will do it for Heat on the Street March Madness Edition. Hopefully, everyone's brackets turn out the right way. We'll see who wins coming up shortly. Miles, hit me long. You got it, homie. Thank you, Miles, Trevor, and Kristen. Great work. And nice moves, everyone. The Harlem Globetrotters ain't got nothing on y'all. But now we got to shift our attention to the Lady Devils. The women's basketball team will face off against USC Trojans on Saturday for the second round of the Pac-12 tournament. AUC won that matchup in early January, so if they find a way to beat USC, they will most likely face the number one team in their tournament in Stanford. The Sun Devils lost both games against the Cardinal this year, so if they want to win, Deja Man, Joy Burke, and the rest of the squad will need to step up their game. And with so much still going on in the world that is college basketball, it's tough to keep up with everything that's going on. But don't worry, Allison Gargario has got you covered. So Allison, what do you have for us? Thanks, Johnny. The Kansas Jayhawks coach Bill Self has won more Big 12 titles in his career with Kansas than he has lost games at home. He has won 10 titles and only lost 9 games. He also led the team to a championship title in 2008. During the Duke Wake Forest game Wednesday, Coach K took a knee during a timeout as he felt dizzy and lightheaded. After the game, he went to the Duke University Medical Center to take some precautionary tests and was sent home early Thursday morning. The school later stated that Coach K has improved considerably. Leave it to Baylor to bring the trend of crazy uniforms from football over to basketball. As you can see, the Bears changed the wording across their chest by using their battle cry, Sikkim Bears. Baylor will showcase these neon yellow and dark green uniforms next week at the Big 12 Championship. Johnny? Thanks, Allison. Those Baylor jerseys sure are something. We'll see if their future in the month of March is as bright as those neon jerseys. But now we're bringing you a brand new segment we like to call the Scorchies. Panel, it has come to my attention that so many guys have more awards to hand out. Care to share? That's right. Welcome to the Scorchie Awards Show. Hey, let's see if we can't beat Ellen with this here selfie. All right, that's going to go up later on the official Inferno Twitter page. That's at Inferno ASU. Follow, follow. All right, enough branding. Let's get into it. The score for player of the year is going to Doug McDermott of Creighton. Doogie, Dougie McBuckets is a shoe in to take the wooden this year. That's essentially the Heisman Trophy of college basketball. He's been averaging 26 points per game and shooting 87% per, from the three throw line. What a season and what a career he's had at Creighton. At 2,966 points, it's not even a question of whether he'll make it to the 3,000 point club, but where he will land. Uh, pending Creighton's tournament performance, it's not unreasonable to see him landing top five all time. That's crazy. There's only seven people in the 3,000 point club. To Tornado Alley and the Kansas Jayhawks, as Bill Self will receive the Scorchy Coach Award of the Year. The accomplishments continue to pile up this year for Coach as he led a team that had four freshmen and two sophomores who played a majority of the game. Self also led the young team to a good record against ranked opponents, including the then-ranked number four Duke early in the year. Overall, the team won the 10th straight Big 12 Conference Championship with a 27-3 record. The team also went 14-3 against opponents in the Big 12. Really no contest here, guys. Considering the age of the team, Self deserves the Scorchy. All right, and the coveted score chief for best team. It's going to Wichita! Joe, we talked about this last week. Yeah, it's going to Wichita. I know what you're thinking, but what about their strength of schedule? Really? They're 31 and 0. Strength of schedule only matters when you have a number in the loss column. You can only play the teams they put on your calendar, and they took care of every single one of them. All right, Torrance, going to put you on the spot here. Heat on the street style. When was the last time a team ended the regular season 31-0? Oh, I may need a... Don't know? That's right. It's never oh. happened. I know, I know they want the national title, but if you ask me, the score sheet is just as good, if not better. Johnny? Thank you, panel. I can tell you guys spend countless hours on your decision-making process. And Anthony, I just took Twitter right now, and as of right now, we're a little behind on the retweets, but don't worry, the day is still young. Now let's move on to the conference tournaments that will be taking place soon. Allison, break down some of the tournaments for us. The Pac-12 tournament kicks off in Vegas this year. Clearly, the Arizona Wildcats are the favorite, being the only ranked team. However, they have had a lot of close calls, including a loss to ASU and Cal. Panel, which team do you think is going to get lucky? All right, I got to go Arizona Wildcats. Uh, they're the only ranked team in the conference. Meow. You like it? All right. They're third in the AP. Dark Horse still going to ASU. If they play like they have at home, look out. Well, it's not, the, it's not the best team that wins. It's the hottest. Remember that. And UCLA is by far the hottest team in the conference. They've won seven in a row. U of A isn't invincible, so look for the Bruins to ball out. My Dark Horse... The little Oregon Ducks right here. Ooh, it has a whole body. <laughs> <laughs> if the games were only 38 minutes long instead of 40, they'd be at the top of the conference. 
I have to pick U of A to win this tournament. There's a clear uh, gap. There's a clear, clear, excuse me, gap in skill between the second place UCLA. The team is ranked number third in, and ranked number three in the nation, and will be led by their offense. The upset is the Devils. The Devils beat U of A earlier this year. Now that was a huge upset, but uh, they might do it again. I mean, they did it with the Valentine's Day game, right? The ACC tournament will get underway in Greensboro, North Carolina. Duke is favored, being ranked number four. But don't forget about Virginia. The Cavaliers are already the regular season ACC champs and ranked fifth in the nation. Panel, who do you think will come out on top? All right. I'm going to channel my, inner, channel my inner Miles Todd here with this. We've got Duke going top. They've got Jabari Parker. I did the little park. Jabari Parker is amazing. Uh, Dark Horse, though, if you even want to call it that, is the Tar Heels. There's a little foot and there's a heel. All right, uh, Marcus Page has shown smart sparks of dominance, like his 35-point performance against NC State a couple weeks ago. Well, like I said, it's not the best team, it's the hottest, and nobody in the country is hotter than North Carolina. They've won 12 in a row, so I gotta go with them. And my dark horse here, the NC State Wolf Pack, right there, so he's my little wolf. But they always seem to make noise this time Looks of year, like so look out. <laughs> I am going with Duke. I believe Jabari Parker uh, with the team is better uh, than Virginia, who, be who uh, beat them earlier and uh, nearly swept Syracuse. The upset is the team who beat them by eight points earlier in the year. I'm speaking of North Carolina. See, I made it all nice and pretty. Uh, the team is eight in rebounds, so if Duke falls in a cold press offensively, look for North Carolina to feast and possibly come away with the upset. Allison? The Big 12 plays in Kansas City, Missouri for their tournament this year. The favorite team is Kansas, having the top NBA prospect Andrew Wiggins. But don't overlook Oklahoma State. From coming off consecutive wins against Kansas and Kansas State, they might just creep up the tournament. Panel, what do you anticipate? All right. Uh, Rock Chalk Jayhawk, Bill Self, little selfie guy right there. Fantastic coach. You won a scorchy for God's sakes. That's lucrative. And uh, they're a very good team. They shoot efficiently. Dark Horse going to be Oklahoma State. That's a cowboy, not Pharrell. <laughs> um, they went on a seven game losing streak, but now Smart's back. And they're uh, coming up in a big way. Do not sleep on the Cowboys and do not sleep on Marcus Smart. Wait, well, Cowboy there makes me happy. See what I did, <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> well, anyways, I'm mixing it up. And my conference champion is my dark horse. I'm going with Oklahoma State. The Cowboys haven't lost since Marcus Smart came back. And that means they're hot. Sense in the theme here, shout out to my grandpa, OK State, class of 1947. What do you got, Torrance? I am picking the Jayhawks. See, it's a J and there's a Hawk. Uh, the team is ranked 24th in points per game and 4th in field goal percentage while also performing great against ranked opponents. So for a young team, they are used to these important games. I am playing it safe and saying the number 23, Oklahoma, has the best chance to upset Kansas because in their two matchups against Kansas, they lost by less than 10 points each game. So if the, And the offense actually stacks up better as they are 11th in the nation. So um, they might just upset the Jayhawks. Well, guys, all this talk about tournaments is getting me excited for the big dance this year. On behalf of Allison, the panel, and our Heat on the Street crew, I'm Johnny Soto. And remember, this isn't madness. It's just March. This has been The Inferno.